please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, quite a bit of volatility that uh, decline has once again been brought into. Just see the intraday chart of the Nifty, of the Sensex and the Bank Nifty as well. So today, of course, the bulls have shown some fight. Uh, keep in mind, we have been sitting on two, to th uh, two or three days uh, of back-to-back -back selling. Uh, but let's just uh, pull out the stocks which are leading this uh, bit of recovery intraday. Uh, uh, Sun Pharma has moved to almost the high point of the day. Just pull out the intraday chart of Sun Pharma. That's making a bit of a move. ICICI Bank from the low point is seeing a bit of a recovery, so that stock uh, still down quite a bit, but from the low point has seen a bit of a recovery. Uh, among other stocks, uh, Dr. Reddy is also almost at the high point. TCS has supported the bulls today, so see the chart of TCS, and that one right now is making the highs of the day. So uh, these are few stocks where you've seen clearly some buying interest. Ashwini Gujarat and Mitesh Chaka with us for BTST calls. Uh, Ashwini, you go first. The last hour is turning quite volatile once again. Uh, any key takeaways and uh, what would be your stock calls? See, first of all, the guests that you invite, please give them a behavior course. A. B. I put my screenshots on the social media. The day your wise men can do that, we'll talk. Now let's get to the BTST. Uh, BPCL is a sell with a stop of 430, target of 410. LNT Finance is a sell with a stop of 156 target of 144 and KPIT is a buy with a stop of 227 target of 242. All right, Mitesh, uh, let's get to your calls as well. What are you working with, buys or sells or both? Yeah, I have one buy and one sell. I think Marico, the way the price and volume and the candlestick bar is shaping up could be a good BTSC trade. Keep a stop at 314, look for a 326, 328 kind of a target for tomorrow. And ONGC is on the sell side. Uh, I'll keep a very tight stop at about levels of uh, 177 and look for declines to about 168 kind of zone. Okay. All right. On that note, let's uh, move on and find out what's been uh, happening in dealing rooms today. What's the chatter like? We have Nimesh joining in as always. Nimesh, fairly choppy. It looked like we're getting into red, but then spared the blushes just, just a bit. So what are you hearing? I should be. So relatively a quieter day, you know, so to speak, because there's not much action either at the HNA desk or at the institutional desk, the flows are pretty much muted. And it looks, and again, the Nifty is struggling to cross that uh, 200 DMA very decisively. If that crosses, then maybe you'll see a bit of a aggressive short covering rally over the next few days. But broadly, the sense I'm getting is, you know, it's a, it's a grinding lower kind of a market. So every, every rally is likely to get sold into. That's the message co clearly coming in from the dealers. In terms of individual sectors, again, you know, it's pretty much mixed throughout the day today. Not really, not one particular sector standing out in terms of either flows or in terms of direction which can take the markets higher. I guess the focus now will shift to the FMC meet. Uh, there is quite expectation that there will be a 25 basis point rate hike. We need to assess to how the, how the markets react. Though it looks like it's price chain, but once, it, once, once the rate hike comes, we need to see how, how markets react. So it's basically going to be how the global markets pan out, but in terms of flows, it's quite muted. But from a direction point of view, uh, you know, every rally is, every rally is likely to get sold into. And, and from here on, maybe, you know, the level of 9,700, or even 9600 is possible is what the f is general sense I'm picking up from the dealing desk. Okay. All right, Nimesh. Thank you very much for that. Well, we've still got about 15-16 uh, minutes to go before the day closes out. Let's get you a lot of the opinion that we've been gathering through the course of the day. This is a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. We caught up with Abhay Lajewala, head of India Research at Deutsche Equities, and asked him whether uh, he thought this market underperformance could continue and whether it was largely because of domestic factors. Take a look. It's obviously started uh, with the global queues, but uh, now the domestic queues are also coming into play. Uh, clearly, uh, it, is, it is the expectation of uh, what's really happening in the bond markets. I think that, that has also uh, gone a long way in, uh, in uh, impacting sentiment. So when you have the term premium widening so considerably, it does lead to fears as to what really is happening on the macroeconomic front. And not everyone internationally realizes that the widening of the term premium is uh, attributable uh, largely uh, to the virtual uh, dysfunctional bond markets that we have right now. Uh, and I think once those issues ease out as the government's borrowing program begins uh, in April, we do believe that the term premium should adjust. But what I'd like to say over here is that while sentiment is weak, the fundamentals are strengthening 
quite considerably as far as India is concerned. Are you already a buyer with the market giving you 10% off its highs? So, uh, you know, clearly sentiment right now is overpowering the fundamentals. And what we are seeing, as we've written on a recent report, is that since uh, the middle of May and the end of 2017, it was always about sentiment overpowering, uh, so beg your pardon, the sentiment overpowering the fundamentals positively, and now it's the reverse. Mm. Fact of the matter is that the economy is improving. Mm. You got the capacity utilization rates across different sectors moving up. In steel, the capacity mm. utilization rate is 82%. In automobiles, the capacity utilization rate is high. Mm -hmm. In cement, demand growth in the third quarter was uh, almost uh, you know 14% 14, 14 or so. So aggregate demand in the economy is coming back. To answer your question specifically, Lata, uh, the issue is the valuation. Mm. When the macro, uh, overall global macro, uh, leads to the concerns that we are seeing, clearly there is a view that uh, India's valuation or the market valuation is probably too high and needs to come down. So in our sense, we have to really see how, how, how this interplay between fundamentals and uh, sentiment works out. Mm -hmm. It is likely that the valuation uh, may come down. So our expectation for this year is earnings growth of roughly about 20% and a valuation derating of 10%, which still gives us a 10% growth for the market. As to what investors should do in the near term, near term wait and watch is, is, is the view. Having said that, at some point in time during the reporting season, we do believe that the fundamentals will reassert. Okay, so is that why you have a target of, uh, the target is flashing on the screen, yeah. 11,500 on the Nifty and 37,000 on the Sensex. And uh, what part of the market do you think would lead that? Uh, is it going to be secular or is it going to be again the banks which would uh, lead the market? Uh, very good question. Uh, clearly, unlike the last two years, it's not as much as a top-down market. It's likely to be a far more bottom-up market. <laughs> And we think that the sectors that will take leadership are going to be the ones where there is certainty to earnings growth. I think this year, more, much more so than the last few years, it is going to be earnings growth that determines the sectors and the stock selection as well. In our view, consumer discretionary, private sector banks and infrastructure are the three sectors that will probably take leadership. Have we expect earnings growth certainty to be the highest okay. in consumer discretionary, private sector banks where there is a potential for consensus upgrades in some of the select private sector banks mm -hmm. because these banks are actually taking market share very aggressively from uh, the state-owned banks. You mm -hmm. know, our banks analyst Manish Karva highlights that uh, you know, uh, about eight years ago, the incremental market share of the private sector banks was 17%. Mm. That has now risen to 107%. Oh. The acceleration in the transfer of market share from the state-owned banks to the private sector banks has been brisk. And what is very important is that the private sector banks today are far more confident to take on the challenge and are beginning to shed many of their inhibitions and taking on risks. So mm -hmm. I will not be surprised if loan growth at some of the private sector banks actually surprises uh, consensus. Getting an exclusive update now uh, on what is happening with Indigo's uh, planes, the ones that have certain engine problems. Now, after the airline grounded two more A320neos due to those engine snags on the 18th of March, that took the total tally of grounded planes to about 10 neos for the airline. Now we're picking up from sources that Indigo has taken two planes uh, off the ground uh, and uh, Pratt & Whitney have actually charted out a plan to take all the grounded planes back to the skies by June. So let's get some more details uh, uh, going. I think we have our colleague Ashpreet with us on the line. Ashpreet, so have they worked out how they're going to sort of fix this and get all the planes back up? Well, yes, uh, absolutely. The kind of uh, plan that uh, Pratt & Whitney has given to Indigo as of now is that they will replace all the 55 en uh, engines which are faulty uh, by uh, within 40 days, which is by June. That is the kind of plan that they've given the first two 
will be shipped to India tomorrow. Indigo will be taking delivery of those two new engines and repaired engines. Now, what uh, we also pick up from sources is that out of these 55 engines which are lying with Indigo 22 have already been returned to Pratt & Whitney. Rest are on their way. Now, what we also pick up is that uh, Pratt & Whitney has been looking at solutions in which they can ensure that all the grounded NEOs, now there are eight left with two already uh, taken off the ground, so they'll have to wait and see how will they go ahead and ensure that by June all these planes are taken off ground. Because remember, in an investor call recently, Pratt & Whitney had told people uh, that uh, they are extremely disappointed with the DGCA order that has gone ahead and grounded the Indigo planes and the Go Air planes, but they will uh, look into ways in which uh, these planes can be taken off ground. Back to you. All right, Ashpreet. Thanks very much for that. Moving on to some corporate action now, Force Motors today signed its joint venture with Rolls-Royce Power Systems for developing diesel engines as well as gensets. CNBC TV 18's Utkarsh Chaturvedi caught up with uh, Prasan Firodia, MD of Force Motors, to get some more details. So this is a joint venture between uh, Force Motors and uh, Rolls-Royce Power Systems, 51% uh, with uh, Force Motors and 49% with uh, Rolls-Royce Power Systems. What predominantly the joint venture will be doing is we will be producing the, 16, the Series 1600 engine from the Rolls-Royce Power Systems uh, universe in India. The current uh, 1600 series uh, program is run in Germany. There is a plant that builds this engine. This entire facility will now move to India, India. and the global requirements for this uh, engine will get catered out of India. So can you uh, take us to the investments in this and by when can we you know, see the production start? So the investments that uh, the joint venture partners have uh, approved today and have signed, uh, given all the board approvals from both the sides, is in the phase one we will be investing 300 crore rupees which will go into the creation of the infrastructure, creation of the uh, engineering infrastructure, because all the uh, engineering for this program going forward will also be led with, uh, within India. And uh, we are setting up the plant in Pune, in Chakan. Uh, we expect to go into production by close to around end of next year. So speaking about the phase ones, why when do you think that the phase two uh, of uh, investment will be needed? Is it this, is this is 300 crore, is this just the initial investment or will be uh, needing more of investment soon? So based on the business plan that has been approved by both partners, uh, this investment takes care of the near future, uh, okay. takes care of the markets that we have identified uh, within the uh, neighboring countries of India, within India and within uh, uh, and the global markets that will be catered by Rolls-Royce uh, for this engine program. Uh, as you know, this engine will not just be used for power generation, but will also go into rail applications uh, across the world uh, and has potential to go into uh, several other applications. So step by step, uh, these decisions will be taken by the board. Let's speak about the revenue uh, capabilities of this JV. What do you see here? So in the near term, we are looking at uh, this joint venture alone giving us a revenue of approximately 1,000 crore plus. You know, I had heard you saying that this is not only a JV about assembling, but we are also looking at the developing uh, gensets. Can you, you know, give us more details on that? We have spoken about the 1600 engine, but on the genset side, uh, what is the outlook? So basically, uh, two things. One, the, the engines that will be produced in the joint venture will... Uh, cater to uh, power generators, so the joint venture will also make complete uh, power generators uh, for the neighboring markets and India. And the engines that the joint venture will produce will be supplied back to Rolls-Royce, who will then cater it to the global uh, requirements. Moving on to some global uh, important events to, of course, track the two-day FOMC meeting kicks off uh, later tonight. This will be Jerome Powell's first meeting, and most investors are expecting the Fed to announce its first interest rate increase of 2018. However, market will also be looking for signals on whether officials may step up the pace of rate increases later in the year. So that's a big event, market moving one. Of course, we'll have the outcome only tomorrow night, our time. Well, we are back to 10,130 on the Nifty. Things are getting whipsawed all over the place. Something like a Bharti Airtel, for instance, there's a big spike and a move from the lows of the day. Then you have something like an Axis Bank, which is racing to the highs, uh, even though the Bank Nifty is still, still in negative territory, but of course off the lows. So those are just some examples of the kind of volatility that we have seen on the street today. Prashant Prabhakar, and senior president and CEO of Yes Securities, is with us on this leg of the show. Prashant, what do you make of it? Everybody's trying to figure out if we're kind of close to the bottom 
almost a 10% correction from the top, or uh, is there more on the downside? Which side of the debate are you on? So we are very close to the bottom is what our feeling is. Uh, a 9,600, 700 level is what we had anticipated that the market should be coming to. The long-term puts uh, that we had taken at that point of time is what we'll be ready for a squaring off uh, during that period. But the fact remains that there are a lot of positives that are also coming out. Uh, there is an earnings growth that has started creeping in, something that we have waited for the last four or five years. There is a capacity utilization increase that is happening. There are positives, there are CV sales that have gone up. Uh, there is a demand uh, that is slowly and steadily creeping in. So a lot of positives rather than, uh, so the downside risk is protected to a large extent. I would say that uh, if you have to start nibbling and building up a portfolio, you should start doing it in the next fall that happens. Uh, uh, I think it's a perfect time to look at the stocks that you couldn't pick up earlier on and build up a portfolio at least for the next two or three years. Okay, and Prashant, good afternoon. So uh, give us two or three stocks that you like. <laughs> so consumption stories, uh, we continue liking Dabur and Marico in that space. Uh, we like ITC, it's a contrarian call. Uh, though it has gone under a lot of pressure, it is priced uh, uh, brilliantly. It has also spread out businesses which are uh, different. We also like in the auto space, Maruti. Maruti is attractively priced at around 8,500 levels, uh, 500, 700 levels at that uh, line. And with a game plan that has played out beautifully for them, it is a must-have stock in your portfolio for the long run. You also have uh, a little bit of nibbling that you can do into uh, IT stocks. Uh, you can end up looking at uh, the mid-cap ones, uh, a persistent or a KPIT in that range. So a mixture of stocks that we would have in our portfolio. Uh, maybe one more uh, is the private banking space. We like the ones with a large retail franchise, uh, an HDFC bank or a Kotak bank uh, for a long-term haul is a good uh, stock to have in your portfolio. Okay, by the way, let's just take a look at the Bank of India's introduced chart. Uh, just just uh, phenomenal, uh, the one, uh, I mean, uh, this is the one which has been getting in and out of uh, FNO ban. Uh, but right now, there's a big move happening on Bank of India, uh, up about one and a half percent. So, uh, uh, of course, this was the one where there was news on, uh, you know, uh, getting recovery of some of the thousand MP. crores they said they'll get back. Yes, mm -hmm. which I mean, it was of course over analyzed uh, perhaps, but uh, the stocks up about one and a half percent right now. So that one is quite interesting. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's also head out some more view that we got uh, today. Sakti Shiva of Credit Suisse on why they are underweight on India. We're still uh, underweight uh, at this uh, point in time. Uh, I mean, the, the reason for being underweight, uh, as you know, are firstly valuations and secondly, uh, earnings uh, revisions. So on valuations, uh, India has been in what we call the expensive four club, which is the four most overvalued markets uh, in the region. Uh, the premium has been above uh, 50%, while the valuations have improved. Uh, at this point, probably not enough for us to upgrade uh, our recommendation. We define capitulation as foreigners being net sellers on a rolling 12 months. At the moment, that number is now zero, so we have not yet gotten to negative. Uh, so we are also we will also get more excited, both about India as well as the region, if that number goes negative. The last time we had foreign investor capitulation was actually two years ago in January of. Uh, 2016 and we made a big uh, buy call at that time. Uh, at this point, as I said, we are still at zero, but uh, if we do get a bit more foreign selling, uh, we actually would uh, officially be in capitulation territory. Now, some markets are already in capitulation territory markets like Taiwan, uh, even Japan. Uh, India is still on a rolling 12 months basis, still at a positive number at this point. Okay, that was uh, Sakti Shiva's call. By the way, just pull out the intraday chart of BML. Uh, Phenomenal the way that stock has all of a sudden seen this last 30 minute rally. I mean, just just, just see the, the chart of that stock, uh, uh, 1066. So, uh, it's a stock which, of course, had a brutal correction from what uh, 1600 all the way down to 1000. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the issue about BML now is about whether that you know divestment is going through mm -hmm. or not. Uh, it's of course got clearance from the from the central government, it's stuck at the Karnataka government level. Uh, uh, I am not saying that you know uh, the the market is sensing something here, but normally this this kind of move it's also an FNO ban, of course, so you can't take fresh shots here. So perhaps that has helped 
but uh, all of a sudden there's a big move which is taking place in BEML right now going home with about 4% rally. You know, it reminds me, Anur, for the longest time of the group of stocks around the Navi Mumbai airport. Mm. Suddenly, there would be a trading punt on them and one would wonder, okay, if there's, there's a final announcement coming yeah. or not. So, this seems to be somewhat similar because I remember the conversation that we had with the Mr. Kalyani mm. because Bharat Forge is one of the entities that's supposed mm. to be showing interest and even they were saying we are yet to hear. Yeah. Hopefully, the next couple of days, some clarity should come through perhaps. Okay, so let's do one thing. Just about two minutes left for markets to close. So, let's just do a quick recap. Uh, Today's been a you know, really interesting day, Surabhi, because if you take a look at the Nifty, that's almost uh, not, not quite at the highest. We should pull out the intraday charts uh, right now of Nifty and the Bank Nifty and also of the Mid-Cap Index because what's been interesting today is that on the, on the index, we had a bit of a downtick. After that, there was a sharp recovery. That got sold into and the market made intraday lows. Uh, and now, there's been quite a bit of recovery that you're seeing. That's the intraday chart of the Nifty almost ending at the high point after that last uh, half an hour rally, last 15 minute rally, that's the Sensex up about 100 points. Uh, Bank Nifty is still a bit of a problem. That's the mid cap index. The index is ending at the high point. The advanced decline is still in favor of declines though. That's the problem point. Uh, and if you take a look at the banks, uh, they have underperformed of course. Uh, let's talk about the, the index stock that uh, uh, made a move in today's trade. Uh, uh, before that, just uh, uh, one more word on the, in terms of the levels. Today, the index is closing uh, at around 10,134 but it's still uh, below its 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, in terms of individual stocks, uh, uh, Aishar Motors was up 3.5%. Big move on that stock, actually, especially towards the end. Uh, apart from that, Tech Mahindra up about 4%. Tata Steel was up 3%. Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy's, Infosys, all these stocks were up between 1% to 2%. Z Entertainment up about 1.5%. HCL Tech, so a couple of these stocks did well. UPL, uh, with the Bajaj Finance and FinServ, so both these stocks also did well. On the way down, IOC was down about 2%, ONGC was down about 1% and ICICI was down about 1%. Okay, well on the mid-cap side, not too bad actually because we are finally ending off with almost a 95 point up move on the index. And for me, the stock that really stood out today was Marico. Very consistent from the morning, good solid buying, ending almost 5% higher. So some interesting moves there, trading above a couple of its summer moving averages as well, this particular stock. Then if we talk about where else was the interest, uh, then on the higher side, you have uh, plenty of buying on a couple of stocks uh, on the IT landscape. So whether it is a KPIT tech or an NIIT tech or a Hexa where largely speaking we've seen gains between 2 to 3, 4 percent uh, depending on the stock that you've picked out. Some buying again on JP Associates, extremely volatile moves in the stock but final count is 3 percent upside on uh, the counter today at least. Uh, DHFL about 2 to 2.5 percent higher. Some of the NBFCs actually, even Manapuram, PFC, REC. Decent day for these stocks, about 2 2.5% depending on which one you are looking at. Uh, Bata managed a 2.5% up move. There was some green on the screen for Titan. Very strong commentary from the management on Bazaar this morning. Um, so these were pretty much uh, the stories on the upside. Let me just see if I'm losing out anything on uh, the upper side. Yeah, so of course, some of the metal stocks beyond the index. Sale, for instance, uh, had a decent run today. 5, 5.5% uh, move coming in over there as well. Uh, as we're seeing. Let's just pull up JSW Steel and just quickly round that off. Uh, even JSPL, of course, was quite smart today. So most of the metal side of the market has ended up on the positive side of the screen. Now let's come to the losers. And here there was uh, quite a bit of selling on JSPL. Now that's obviously news driven because of the stake purchase in Gujarat Gas. Let's get both of those stocks up. JSPL is down about 5, 6. Uh, uh, GSPL, not JSPL, beg your pardon. That's the up move, John JSPL. GSPL is the one where there's about a 4-4.5% four, of a drawdown. We'll get uh, Gujarat gas up for you as well in just a moment. Uh, Canara Bank, because of the concerns around fraud, 4% down, then some selling on NBCC and Oil India also continued. Uh, so these were some of the stocks that were losing ground. Let's not forget Graphite, obviously high beta, you either get a 5% up move or a 5% down move. Usually on these stocks, today was one of the down days. But otherwise, largely speaking, a decent run for mid-caps, Anuj, as you've been maintaining. Uh, that, uh, I mean, overall, at least the index is going home with some gains uh, for what it's worth. Well, yes, uh, Marico, by the way, was, was a stock to watch uh, right. in the morning uh, in top 10. And yeah. uh, that really is uh, the one which, uh, as Surabhi pointed out, had a bit of a secular run. Uh, but uh, a couple of other stocks also did well. Uh, even Balram Puccini today was up uh, a bit. Uh, let's take final thoughts from our guests then. Uh, so, uh, uh, Ashwini, uh, does the last 15-20 uh, minute move change anything or... Uh, are you fairly certain in your mind that uh, this is a market which is headed lower? 
See, 15, 20 minutes never changes anything. And the other point is that I think there will be some macro news which will turn all this fund flow, etc., in the right direction. Without that, yes, you will have a few pullback rallies here and there. But uh, overall, you have to reclaim the 200-day moving average before you conclude anything. And for that, you know, possibly the bank nifty has to turn first. If the bank nifty does not turn, you'll get what you got today. We get up to a resistance and the bank nifty gives way. Unless that turns, I don't think it's so simple. You could have another choppy day. Uh, you know, today's highs and lows could be nice boundaries. But uh, once we take one of those boundaries out and fairly decisively where, you know, the real shorts they cover, uh, I think uh, the downside remains open. Even in the best of trends, there can be a couple of days where we pause and then fresh lows are hit. Let's see where, what the global follow through is. If even there things uh, continue to come off, then I think uh, we are outperforming on the downside anyway. I to think, Ashwini, what that macro trigger could be. I don't know, who knows, maybe Mr. Jerome Powell feels that, no, there's no need to get worried about rate hikes. We're good with three. Forget four, four is not on the horizon. I'm just, you know, having a lighter moment here, just speculating. But obviously, that's the big global event to watch out for. Um, uh, let's get closing thoughts from Mitesh, you as well. What would your approach be to trade tomorrow morning? Yeah, so <clears throat> mostly looking at, uh, you know, uh, going long once we start getting some kind of intraday reversal charts and also manage to capture the 200 average, I think I've been saying as much for the last two days. Uh, once that happens, I think then you can look at 10,300, 320 levels being revisited and that will also halt the decline. So, you know, in, there could be some kind of consolidation or we'll take some kind of, a, we'll looking for a reversal uh, once that is happening. But for the timing, I think it remains a stock specific market. I think 10,050 has been respected. We are oversold. This, this, it's still a choppy market, I think, you know, but we uh, uh, do believe that after one, two days of choppiness, if we start getting past and stabilizing above the 200 average, we might get a stronger pullback. So that possibility is slowly growing, but that will come to know in the next two days. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Thanks very much for being with us on Closing Bell and taking us through to 3.30 today. You have a good evening. And at commodities then, and there's plenty happening when it comes to agriculture and farming. We just saw yesterday, last night, actually, the Commerce Ministry come out with a export trade, uh, agri-export draft, really. Uh, so this is plenty happening when it comes to the farming, agriculture, doubling farmers' income, etc. And that perhaps is a theme that we should perhaps explore further going on from here as well. But really can't leave what's happening in the global markets as well. The trade concerns on what's happening with U.S. and the China retaliation are other things that have been impacting the global and the Indian trade as well. Joining us now on the show is Vipul Shah of Grow Value. Vipul, hi. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll start with the global trade, first of all, and that really seems tensed. There have been many countries who have talked about on what the U.S. should and shouldn't be doing. And then within China as well, we have seen some changes happen. Starting with China itself, what impact do you see making uh, happening on the global trade, really? China, which is one of the biggest and fastest growing economy in the world, is shifting export lead economy to domestic consumption lead economy. Earlier, China used to serve the world. Now is looking to produce for their own countrymen because they want to increase the cost, increase the power of purchase. So they're increasing cost of labor. Labor cost in China has gone up 15% year on year, which makes certain products very, very expensive. So industry in India, which has the cost of production at low level, will benefit because cost of production in China is going up. This is the theme to watch out. There are sectors and pockets where China versus India, we are doing much better. Hmm. Well, clearly, China, uh, India seems to be picking up that pace. But, you know, as I was saying before we started talking to you, that there are two themes really playing in the Indian markets. One, of course, is global and China. And the other is doubling the farmer's income. And there's a lot being done in that sense. Fertilizer policy is something that you track as well. How do you see that sector doing forward from here? Uh, fertilizer to get benefited from policy of governments to reduce import of fertilizer. 20% of total demand of urea is made by import. Urea to get benefited from rising sugar and cotton price. And if you look at other way around, uh, manufacturing from import sub substitutions. Uh, 
फर्टिलाइजर स्टील पेपर एक्सेट्रा इंडिया इम्पोर्ट करेंटली एंड ड्यू टू डी ग्लोबलाइजेशन इम्पोर्ट विल स्टॉप सो लोकल मैन्युफैक्चर वुड स्टार्ट ग्रोइंग अप Uh, you know uh, one sector that you haven't touched yet really is sugar where we have seen some decline in prices today of course has been an off day because the export duty has been scrapped and that has supported the markets but then even then india exporting sugar in the global markets is a bit of a hitch because the global sugar prices are trading at a seven month lows how do you see this sector going forward sugar in 2018 is similar to steel in 2016 cost of products cost of production of sugar is around 20 cents per 20 cents per cents per pound globally against ongoing us sugar price at 13 cents per pound us sugar price is today at 40 percent below cost of production yeah with those kind of concerns really vipul where do you see the surplus sugar going and what perhaps is the way to tackle this and what are the global learnings really that the indian industry needs to pick up right now we've been seeing a soaring of ethanol price i mean strong demand brazil sugar mills are diverting more canes to make the biofuel which would improve price of sugar and give boost to sugar mill profitability use sugar will jump and surplus sugar will get exported hmm we will another theme that we spoke about last time as well i remember is metals where you told me that the metal story perhaps has played out in 2017 itself while we saw this year open on a positive note are you looking at any opportunity yet there for the time being is done is just the metal stock would get into consolidation mode for next 6 months we booked out in metal in first week of january we are lucky to play out that cycle at the right time hmm we will just before we let you go uh, we of course have spoken about various themes but another thing that you track quite closely is the manufacturing sector what story do you think will play out from here on when it comes to this because make in india produce in india seem to be uh, some of those key words that the government is quite keen on as well I'm we are looking at manufacturing for export and manufacturing for import substitutions these are the macro theme that should play out for next 5 years industry like chemical auto parts forging home textile has advantages so it will grow to ex- grow on export and uh, manufacturing to for import substitutions uh, we have fertilizer steel paper India currently import due to deglobalization import will stop so local manufacturing would start growing hmm well yes we pull as you mentioned there are various commodity themes that continue to play up especially because of the doubling of farmers income until 2022 so because of that we of course are looking at exports sugar manufacturing as we pull mentioned fertilizer paper auto those are a few of other themes that could actually continue to work up as well But let's get in talking about the commodity strategies therein, where we are looking at slightly choppy day today, and this is ahead of the U.S. Fed meeting, which kickstarts today. While of course the announcement would for us would only coming by tomorrow night, but we are looking at a bit of a hesitancy across board ahead of that. Tapan Patel of LKB Securities now joins us on the show to talk about strategies. Tapan, hi, and let's start with the metal space first, where we have seen further pressure come in. Really, are you picking up anything as we see these declines? Is the bottom anywhere close? and what really does seem to you as a commodity which could actually jump up from here zinc i'm assuming would one of the choices really hi manisha good afternoon yes i think as you said the market is uh, really trading in an error range uh, awaiting the fed meeting and there are no major data in uh, this uh, couple of days so definitely market is trading in an error range and if we talk about base metals i think copper can be a good uh, bet to go short uh, for near term because of the weak fundamentals and higher supplies so first of all at mcx we can expect selling around 446 for the target of 441 and if we uh, go for a long bet in a near term then i think yes uh, definitely uh, zinc can be a good buy Uh, from uh, to, uh, 210 to 211 levels, uh, and the, the breakout is uh, about to 214, and we can expect a 218 and 221 levels in a short term to medium term. Hmm. Tapan, when it comes to the precious metals as a space, it's not a great picture there too. While of course we seem to be holding that 1300 mark with quite a bit of a support, 1307 I believe was yesterday's low. 
we ha we are trading nearly ten dollars higher from those kind of levels. How do you look at the gold prices moving forward? Yes, I think for the today and for the uh, for tomorrow, we can expect prices to trade sideways sideways to down uh, in bullion, and definitely a thirteen hundred is a good support for gold prices. So we can expect prices to trade uh, uh, lower and uh, selling around uh, 30,350 is a good level to go short for the with the stop loss above 30,420 and the target can be a 30,200 levels in the gold. Tapan, while that of course is a very, very near term strategy that you have laid out for us for gold, but uh, with the fact that the wedding season is soon going to be upon us, it is going to be Akshay Tritya next month. So there is this bit of a more interest that we will see in gold, not just as a asset class, but as a physical buying as well. A any uh, broader ranges that you look there really? Yes, if we talk about physical buying from retail investors, uh, 29,800 can be a good support level to go along. And if we if we get the low levels in near term, then definitely we can see some buying pressure coming in uh, from the retail investors. And uh, at upside, we can expect 30,500 and 30,800 is a good resistance level. So I expect prices to trade in this range, and buying only comes around uh, can only comes around uh, 29,800 levels. Mm. So you do see a breach of 30,000 possible in the Indian markets in the near term. Yes. 